Workhorse wolves, workhorse wolves, workhorse wolves. Today we're going to talk about workhorse wolves. I love working with natural fibers, like I really, really do. But let's be honest, 100% wool is usually more expensive than plant-based fibers or man-made fibers. So does that mean that if you are, you know, plying your fiber craft on a pretty tight budget, that means that you don't get to work? with wool no no it doesn't the truth is out of the market there is a price point for everybody and today i'm going to share with you three of my favorite yarns that will not break your budget and some of these you would be able to get a sweater quantities worth of wool yarn for under 50 dollars us so hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and learn about some of my favorite workhorse wools. Before I jump into my favorite workhorse wools, uh, down in the description box, you are gonna find a link to all the yarns that I talk about today, and these will have clearly marked affiliate links, which means if you click on one of these links, and you make a purchase, I get a small commission, this helps support my channel. And so if you use an affiliate link or leave me a super thanks or buy me a coffee or any of the myriad ways that you can help support my channel, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, and thank you so much. However, if all you're able to do is hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up, that is wonderful. I'm really happy that you are here watching a video today and hopefully this just helps you on your fiber crafting journey because that is the most important thing to me is spreading the joy and love of making things with pretty string. All right, let's jump into why we're here today, which is to look at the pretty wool. <laughs> First up, we're going to talk about what I think is probably the OG of reasonably priced workhorse wools, which is Patton's Classic Wool. This yarn is so basic that it doesn't list any breed of sheep. <laughs> it just is wool, 100% wool. Uh, totally generic sheep wool. Not that there's anything wrong with basic bitch sheep. Like all wool is great wool. It's just what purpose is it being used for, right? Like that's the thing. That is the thing, by the way. All wool is beautiful wool. Like all the wools that come from the various sheep have served their purposes and they're all beautiful and kind of their own way. It's really what they are being used for. Just because a band doesn't say Merino or BFL or some other exotic sheep breed doesn't mean that it isn't a quality wool and I think that's definitely the case with Patton's classic wool. Um, I'm gonna be honest I have one ball of it and I can't find it anywhere. I have been searching up and down and I cannot find this ball of yarn but I do have my swatch here and I often use this yarn um, for video demonstrations because I can get it easily and it comes in a wide variety of colors. Naturally, the one I have right now is this gray, <laughs> but it does come in a wide variety of colors. And you can see that it creates a lovely stockinette fabric. You know, it looks lovely even, and I haven't even washed and blocked it yet. Um, it's not, like the softest yarn in the world. You're not going to mistake this for Merino or BFL, but it is certainly uh, soft enough is how I would describe it. Whether this is going to be soft enough to wear against your skin with a sweater is really going to depend on kind of your personal sensitivities to wool. Um, for me, I can wear this like against my skin for a while and not feel irritated at all. By the way, what I just did, this is the test, right? If you're ever wondering like, is this a wool that I can wear as a sweater? You knit up a swatch and then you just stick it in your shirt, you know, or even like, you know, just kind of tuck it under your bra band if you need to and just wear it for a little bit, like an hour or two around the house while you're doing things. You're gonna figure out really quickly that way, whether the wool is soft enough for you to wear against your skin. Um, I would say that this wool for me is sort of on the edge, um, but this wool is certainly one that I would have no problem making hats, gloves, 
houseware items, like if I wanted to make a wool pillow or blanket, this yarn would totally serve me well. This is a hard wearing yarn, so one thing that's really nice about this is it will stand up to being used on a regular basis. Like you're not gonna have to sit there and worry like, oh my God, is it going to pill within five seconds after I finish the project? No, this is a nice hard wearing wool. One thing I wanna note, this yarn is labeled as a medium weight yarn, worsted weight. And I have seen people online complain that it's a lighter worsted weight and almost DK. And I will say this is a yarn that when it comes off the ball, definitely looks lighter than maybe some other yarns you might see. But I think this is a case where you need to swatch it, wash it, block it, and see how it blooms. Because sometimes with natural fiber, when the yarn comes off the ball, it looks lighter, but then after washing it, it kind of, the yarn fluffs up more and it blooms and then it really kind of gets to what its actual weight is going to be, the actual thickness of the yarn. And this is definitely to me, I think Patton's Classic is an example of that. The price is right with Patton's Classic wool. Uh, at the big box stores, it's usually priced between $6.99 and $8.99 a ball. There's 149 yards of wool that comes with this, and that prices it at about six cents per yard. So this is actually at regular price, the most expensive yard that we're gonna look at today. Um, but the big advantage of this, like I said, is that there's usually coupons that you can use or sales going on that can bring the price down even more. And you can actually pick this up locally. You can actually go to the store and see what the colors look like in person uh, and not have to try to order it online. Of course, that is somewhat dependent on the big box store in your area. We all know, that lately a lot of the stores have been pulling back on their yarn selection. Sometimes these types of patents classic is very picked over. Sometimes you can't guarantee that you're gonna get all the colors that you want out of it, but uh, you can purchase this online as well. Nice thing too, by the way, with patents, uh, their website, Yarn Inspiration, has a lot of free patterns that you can go and look at. I've worked, in fact, my my shop back here that I just finished. This was made, made. This was made with Patton's linen yarn, and I got this pattern free off their website. So, if you are looking to find an easier to find, economical, basic wool yarn, maybe even get a sweater quantities worth at under fifty dollars, Patton's Classic Wool is definitely one worth looking at. Now, full disclosure, I am a Knit Picks affiliate. Um, I have been for a very long time now on my channel. Um, and that is because Knit Picks has been one of my go-to places for online yarn since I was a very young knitter. When I was a young knitter, freshly moved to Los Angeles, didn't have a lot of money, really had to save up my pennies even to buy like a precious knitting magazine knitted. Uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes was like my go-to for buying like natural fiber yarn. <laughs> like that was it. It was Wool of the Andes. And to this day, I have so much Wool of the Andes in my stash. Um, a lot of, I have a lot of Wool of the Andes in my stash because this is like one of the yards that people really often use when they're going through the Master Hand Knitters course. Um, so yeah, this is just like a well-established yarn. Here is a ball of it. You know this has been in my stash for a long time because of the label. Like that is like OG Knit Picks label right there. <laughs> But Wool the Andes is not as basic as the Patton's Classic Wool. It comes from what they call the Peruvian Highland Wool. Peruvian Highland Wool is a wool that you will see in a number of more economical 100% wool yarns. And it's actually a crossbreed of a Corridale sheep and a Merino sheep which is really interesting because Cordell itself is a breed of sheep that started as a cross between Merino and I think Lincoln or Lincolnshire sheep. So anyway, 
just a little fun factoid for you. So from the merino, this makes this wool not as soft as merino. It's not as soft, but it is softer than maybe some of the other like more generic 100% wool yarns that you'll see at these price points. But from the Corydale, it means that this yarn is a little, what I would call hardier. It's a little more hard wearing. It doesn't pill as quickly as maybe Merino might, but it's like still very comfortable to wear against the skin, right? Um, again, somewhat this comes down to your own personal sensitivities in terms of being able to wear wool against the skin, but I've always found that um, my Knit Picks Wool of the Andes was very comfortable. I, didn't, I wouldn't like experience any inordinate amount of itchiness from it. The nice thing about this yarn too is this comes in a wide variety of colors. Like just so many colors with Wool of the Andes are available to you. And something I really have always appreciated with Knit Picks, and I swear I'm not saying this because I'm an affiliate. This is just, this was this was true long before I started the YouTube channel. But um, one thing that's really nice with Knit Picks, when you look at their yarns, they give a really nice description of the color itself. They'll tell you like what the qualities of the colors are and what other colors in the range it matches well with. And that always gives me a lot of confidence when I'm buying yarn online and I'm buying colors online. I don't think I've ever bought a ball of yarn from Wool of the Andes line and went, oh no, that's not what I was expecting the color to look like at all. I'm always like, man, those descriptions are really spot on. But one thing to be aware of in terms of color with Wool of the Andes, how soft and kind of lofty the yarn is coming off the skein is very much affected by the color, meaning the lighter colors, like this gorgeous, gorgeous um, light blue yarn. Uh, this is called Clarity. I love the color of this yarn. Um, it's very soft and it's softer than this kind of more brown red. Like I can hold these two in my hand or even this one, which is, which is this corally color called Conch. I can hold these both in my hands and this red yarn is a little rougher. The yarn isn't as fluffy or lofty as this one. So that's something I've always noticed with well, the Andes, the darker colors tend to be a little scratchier, a little less lofty, at least coming off the skein. Um, I've noticed, I'm gonna bring this back in, like with this project, I noticed that after washing and blocking, like the, the yarn fluffs up, the red yarn fluffed up certainly, and it doesn't feel like the green, the dark green is a little, I think it's called jalapeno, but the dark green is a little bit softer than the red, but not where I would feel uncomfortable wearing this. It's just like a slight textural difference. And that is not unusual for yarn. In fact, that's very common. Um, oftentimes with yarns, the way that the dye affects the wool means that different colors will feel a little bit differently in the hand, um, even within the same brand. As for the price, a 50 gram ball, which is about 110 yards, is gonna cost $3.79 regular price. And Wool of the Andes often goes on sale, so you can get it even less at those times when Knit Picks put it on sale. But that means that regular price is a little over three cents of yard. So this is very economical. You can totally get this and get a sweater's quantities worth for under $50. And in fact, Knit Picks uh, usually has a deal going on where if you buy 10 balls of yarn of the same yarn, you get a 10% discount. And the other really nice thing with Wool of the Andes is, I'm talking about this is the worsted weighted yarn, but they also sell this yarn at DK weight and bulky weight. And so that's really nice. Of the wools that I'm talking today, this is the only one that comes at different weights. So to me, it's just really hard to be, in terms of uh, availabilities of color, being able to buy it at different weights and its price point, it's kind of hard to be Wool of the Andes. So to be honest, Knit Picks used to be my go-to economical wool yarn, but it has now been surpassed by Valley Yarns Northampton. 
Oh my God, I love this yard so much. <laughs> like nitpicks, Northampton Valley Yards is a 100% Peruvian Highland yarn. That's right, it comes from the same crossbreed of sheep as well of the Andes. And yet somehow, I don't know how, but somehow their yarns are even softer and a little bit loftier and just absolutely gorgeous to work with. Like every time I get Valley Yards and I work a project with it, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so happy with this yarn. Oh my God, I can't believe it's this price point. Oh my God, it's just wonderful. I love this yarn so much. Have I, have I thoroughly expressed my enthusiasm for this yarn? I don't think so. There's a lot of things that go into the qualities, not the quality, the qualities, the characteristics of yarn than just the breed of the sheep. The breed of the sheep have a lot to say in uh, the characteristics of the yarn, but it's not the end all be all either. How the wool is processed, how it's spun, the dyeing process that it goes through, all of these things affect the characteristics of the yarn. And somehow Valley Yarns, what they have done, the process they are going through, um, just I think makes this yarn a little bit softer, not a little bit, makes this yarn softer, it makes this yarn, it's not as scratchy, it's a little loftier. It's just like, you can just feel the difference when you work between the Valley Yarns and the Wool of the Andes. Um, I think the way that I would describe the difference between Wool of the Andes and Northampton is that Wool of the Andes is a little bit more rustic. So yeah, I love this yarn and you can see what it looks like in projects. Uh, first, I'll just start with this one. This project, if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, is going to look familiar. This is the Amberine Shawl by Amy Snell. And I love this project and I worked it up in this yard, <laughs> like that is the same yard. Um, and you can see it just has lovely stitch definition. It's been holding up great. You know, I, I blocked this fairly aggressively and you don't see any pilling in it. So it's a nice hard wearing yarn. It has a nice little bit of halo without it being too much halo. You know, it's really nice. The only thing that bums me out about this yarn is it only comes in worsted weight. This yarn used to come in a sport weight as well, but they've discontinued the sport weight of this yarn. Webs, if you see me, if you hear me, please bring back sport weight Northampton, <laughs> please. That being said, the price on this yarn is phenomenal. For $8.99 regular price, you get 100 grams of yarn, which is about 247 yards, and it is a little bit more than three cents a yard. This yarn is basically the same price as Will of the Andes. It's a squidge more, squidge more expensive. Like, I'll show you. So this is the price per yard of the Valley Yards which is 0 0.036. So, okay, I could round that up to set four cents a yard, um, but it's 0 0.036 cents a yard. And the wool of the Andes, 379 divided by 100, oops, 110 equals 0 0.034. Like, it's really like, the, it's, neg it's so negligible, it doesn't matter. I think there is a place for all of these yarns that I've talked about today. Like, Patton's Classic, like I said, I really like the fact that I can go to my local big box store and find that yarn and not have to purchase it online. I really, really like that. Wool of the Andes, I love that it comes in the different weights. You can get it in DK, you can get it in bulky, you can get it in worsted. And like the price is phenomenal, but, 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 but. If you were to say, Carrie, of the three yarns that you've picked, you've talked about today, if you could only pick one worsted weighted version, one worsted weighted yarn, which would it be? It'd be Valley Yarns all day, every day. Like, without a question in my mind. Like, this is, this is it. This is the one economical yarn, worsted weight, to rule them all, at least of the ones that I've talked about today. <laughs> so, yes, there it is. Those are my three favorite workhorse wool yarns. But I'd love to hear from you. 
Have you worked with any of these yarns? What's been your experience with them? Or is there a workhorse wool yarn that you really like that I didn't talk about today? Please let me know down in the comments below. So that is it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other fiber crafting friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos, giving the thumbs up, all of it. All that helps YouTube's algorithm. It really helps me out with YouTube's algorithm to help get the word out that I'm here and I am worth spending some time with. If you really, really, really love my channel, please, please consider uh, utilizing one of my affiliate links down in the description box or leave me a super thanks or a tip through buy me a coffee. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, commissions that I earn, tips that I get, all of it gets reinvested back into the channel so I can buy materials for review, materials for demonstration, and it, it just really does help support my channel. So thank you so much if you utilize any level of support, and especially thank you so much for hitting subscribe and the notification bell. If you haven't already, please make sure you do before leaving so that way you know whenever I upload a new video or start a live stream. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye. Oh, I'm having a very pink day. I'm having a pink day. I feel like there should be a song about that. Pink is the thing right now with the whole Barbie rage, but... Honestly, it's a little funny that I'm wearing pink because I'm about to be talking about fall coming and and wool coming back into our lives after the summer months. And yet, I'm very much in pink mode. I'm not sure if this pink mode screams fall, but I don't care. It's who I am. I did not intend to match my outfit to my favorite yarn. That just happened. <laughs> that was just complete coincidence. But pink is, like, green is my favorite, favorite color. But pink is like right up there. Like it's kind of like green, purple, pink. Those, those are my colors, green, purple, and pink.